Hello. Now uh, we will do chapter six, international parity relationships and the forecast and exchange rate. Uh, we will explain what international parity relationship and then uh, we will see how to forecast the exchange rate. This chapter, uh, broadly there are three parts in this chapter. First, the uh, uh, international parity relationship and second is the power purchase per, uh, purchase parity and then the third is the uh, uh, fisher effect. So starting from the international rate parity, what is the international rate parity? Now we have to assume that there's no arbitrary opportunities and this is basic assumption of all finance, right? So, um, and there are considered two alternative way to invest your funds. Without arbitrary opportunity, uh, we can choose either one actually, and it should be indifferent. And the first one is to invest domestically at the United States interest rate. So in the United States, you can invest uh, domestically and you will get the, the US interest rate. And the second one is to invest in foreign currency for example, if it is a UK at the foreign interest rate, which is UK rate, right? And you can hedge the exchange risk because uh, there's exchange rate risk by selling the maturity value of the foreign investment for. So if you sell the same maturity value of foreign investment for, then you can actually hedge the uh, exchange rate risk. And assume that also the no arbitrage and no default. What happened is now if you invest dollar dollar domestically and at the US interest rate. So US interest rate is I dollar, right? So I dollar is US interest rate. And then you receive dollar plus one plus I dollar, right? So this is US interest rate. Now for about UK, uh, there are number of ways to actually have to transact. So first of all, because you have to exchange dollar for pounds, right? That is pounds times one over spot rate, spot rate. And then you invest pounds at UK interest rate, which is the I pound, then what you get is now this is the pounds that you can receive from exchange from dollar and then one plus UK interest rate. And then what you can do is this, now the last one is to sell the maturity value of UK investment forward, right? For exchange of the predetermined dollar amount. So we basically set the same predetermined forward rate because uh, to hatch to hatch against the exchange rate changes. Then what you, <clears throat> the dollar amount you can receive is now this is the amount of pounds, right? And then times forward rate will be the dollar you're gonna receive. So the domestic investment should be basically the same as now, so this is domestic, right? That's US, and then this is foreign, UK. The process should be the same because there's no arbitrary. If it's not the same, then there's arbitrary. We rewrite this one plus domestic interest rate equals to forward rate divided by spot rate times one plus foreign interest rate. Again, you can rewrite this, forward rate equals to spot rate times one plus domestic interest rate and divided by one plus foreign interest rate. So that's the, that's the foreign, a uh, forward rate may be determined by first spot rate and the second is the domestic interest and third is foreign interest. So same thing here, 
our net cash flow should be zero, right? Uh, to satisfy the no arbitrary opportunity assumption. So if you borrow in the UK, you can, uh, I mean, borrow in the US, you have S dollar, and then cash flow one, you have to pay back S plus one plus I in US interest rate. And then you lend this dollar to the UK, then you basically have saying is S1 times one plus I pounds. And then you sell receivable forward, then the, your payoff is basically the difference between the spot rate next period and the forward rate net. So if the forward rate is higher, then you have positive cash flow. If the spot rate is higher, you have negative cash flow plus one plus pounds. Then finally, this is the cash flow next year. Initially zero, so it should be zero. Then you have F equals to S times one plus I US divided by one plus I UK. So international rate parity tells us that the interest rate, each country's interest rate determine the exchange rate. Now, what about multi-year? The multi-year is also the same. So, so far we have computed no arbitrage one year forward rate. And what about two year forward rate compounded interest for two years? Then what happened is now two year interest. So one year interest rate should be, now the spot rate is here, this one, right? So times, interest rate in each, that will be the forward rate. So that's the pound per euro. Now, so forward rate one equals to 0 0.88 pounds per euro. And second forward rate now, you can also recalculate this spot rate, and then now you have two year compound interest. So second year forward rate will be 0 0.968 pound per euro. So you, the, the number of compounds increase as number of years increases. So if we define more carefully, like the generalized nth year, then the spot rate for nth year will be, this is spot rate, right? Spot rate today times one plus, say, domestic to the nth and one plus interest of the foreign nth. So if we change this one, say, nth of, say, US dollar and pounds, then the spot rate between the dollar and pounds times one plus dollar interest rate to the nth divided by one plus pound interest rate to the nth. Okay. So that is how to calculate the nth year, multi-year forward rate. 